start with your your personal favorite uh, amongst all that were featured. Right? Uh, for me, the 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 story that actually kind of brings it all together and makes it very poignant is was the Priya story when she is sitting and watching and she starts talking and effectively. Uh, I think me so much I, I reached out to Priya and called her to Oh really? You, you met her? Yeah. I met her after that. I called her to her office and we sat down and we talked. Okay. Um, so, so, so just for people, because they don't know the Priya story, it's about this, this woman who stays in Delhi. It's a monologue for five minutes. And she just gets five minutes a day to herself. And she just talks about where she's not a mother, she's not someone's uh, uh, you know, sister. No one in, in those five minutes. That's a very really honest five minutes there. That's the most honest five minutes I've seen. She actually literally you know, bears her heart and as a single mother. Anurag, what was your first reaction when you, when you saw this? Uh, and do you, did you have a realization that there's such great storytellers across the country? For me, uh, when he sent me the film, the first cut, <coughs> I will see it. I will react to it. I'll give him my feedback. I was sitting in my office when I started playing it. I just couldn't get up. I remember I called you, called it right after I saw it twice. I, I can't really uh, dissent it, but it had a kind of a cumulative effect. It's a, it's, that film inspired me so much. There's so much of India that we don't see on screen. And India in a day could not have been done by one individual. Like a, it's like a collective film. So everybody's perspective, the point of views, and how it came together so well, it suddenly shows you a country that, that fills you with hope. And that was my, I was very moved by it. And that's one film I've seen so many times by now. And I can keep watching it. And I can't describe exactly, it's just, I was being overwhelmed by it. And I've seen life in India. I've seen. I've also seen the, the Japanese, the Japan in India. I've seen those two. And I, I said, this is the best one. <laughs> Were you amazed also with the fact that, you, being a director yourself, you usually used to working on a screen. Do you know what's. You can't, write, you can't write a film like India. Correct. So, so you can't write it. Were you amazed that Richie was able to put something together? Because he started in a clean slate, right? Of course, he got the footage, but everything was a clean slate. I thought that, you know, what he managed to do very well was put the India out there. Like, I, I tell my boys, when they're very confused about things, I said, you know what, just, just leave everything and go discover the country. I've sent many people on a journey like that. Most Are of my directors, started like yeah. No, I send everyone. I send just travel alone. Travel alone, go across the country. Get on to a bus, take a bicycle. Just, just spend two, three months, four months discovering. And what that journey does to most of them, and they all come back and much richer, they actually end up making movies. India and India does that. It's that journey. There's nothing in India and India that was predictable that you can think of, like Mother Winston and the way he did it, starting with early morning, going through the day, ending at the night, celebration, magic lights, everything. It, it gives out of India with all this noise in time. Like I remember I made one film when it was selected for a festival, my son did that and sat down on it and cleaned up the sound so much. When the film played there, the first thing they said, India is not such a quiet country. <laughs> so like, Why is your sound so clean? No, <laughs> and I've never forgiven him for that. <laughs> but the thing is, this film with all its silences and its noise and it's eclecticness, in the sense it does, it looks suddenly, you feel what a vast country it is and you have really not seen anything. And your problems and everything is, the perception of things seems so small when you see that film. It does that too. The, the one other myth that it busts the film, I thought, is that, that you know, most believe Indians don't have a great sense of humor. I mean, there were these humorous moments there. Uh, I remember the lift elevator scene being, being one of them. Uh, there was this wife who orders a husband that ordered uh, in, I'm not cooking today. Does that bust that me? I mean, no sense of humor in India. We take offense to everything. <coughs> I, I think we have a great sense of humor. 
and we also take a lot of offense. <laughs> That's what India is. <laughs> it's a contradiction. Anurag and some to respond to that. Uh, you know, uh, we had uh, Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra here yesterday, and, and he spoke about how, uh, as and since you're a filmmaker, that censorship needs to go. We should just have certification. Uh, do you think, because we're talking about content on YouTube, do you think that's that's the way forward? Because I don't think you need any sort of censorship there as far as you're not plagiarizing uh, content. I think it's uh, to have some kind of a censorship in the age of YouTube and internet is pointless. It's not even about what I think is right or wrong. I'm saying what are you trying to block people from? We should we have to start treating our audiences as adult people who can think for themselves and we have to stop handling them and stop doing things on their behalf because who are we trying to protect and, I, and that's when they can actually stand up and think for themselves we are preventing them from growing up we are preventing them from standing up I, I, I don't want to watch something I don't watch it I don't see many things. I would refuse to see it. But if I want to watch something, I want to watch it in its honesty. I, I, I have a problem going to cinema and somebody says this film has been cut down. I don't want to watch it. I don't even like intervals in our film. Because for me, interval is also some kind of it's a, it's a problem. So I, would, I, I wait for movies sometimes to come out on a Blu ray or if I'm traveling, I catch most of my films. So, do you as a filmmaker, do you see, you know, so internet platforms like, say, Google and others as the solution till such time this, this censorship issue can be tackled. See, there, there, there are two very different audiences. There are the millionaires who, who love watching the film on their laptops and things. I grew up watching films on big screen. So I want to have both possibilities. Yes, I watch more films on, on digital screens, but I want the possibility of having to see the films on, on the larger screens sitting in the front row like that. And I enjoy the experience. It's an experience. And yes, there is, uh, like my daughter would not come to cinema and she begin to watch everything on the laptop. So you know, there are two distinct audiences. It's like, what are you conditioned to? So for me, when I was growing up, cinema was this major experience. It was almost magical. And I have liked that experience all my life. And I like to watch movies like that. I still, I still don't sit in the back row or balcony. I'm still the tallest person. I still sit in the front and watch a film. So I like that experience. But when I have no choice, I don't have a problem watching a digital and now they're coming up with a whole lot of stuff that you can watch a film in a type virtual thing. I'm gonna sit there and watch a film. It's almost an, it's a very immersive experience. So even the, the internet, the digital and everybody is trying to turn it into an immersive experience. And cinema for me has to be an immersive experience. And the screen is away from me like and this small, it's not so immersive. But if somehow it can surround me. It's an immersive experience, I'm more than that. Hello sir, Priyanka here. Uh, my question is to Anurag sir. Sir, why uh, censorship is only for films? There are several of dialogues in books uh, it, uh, that public reads. So like it should be global, like this audience should be given a choice. Let them decide they whether to watch a film or you film. That's, that's the whole debate about the principle yeah. we all want. Why censorship is only for films? That so question it should be addressed to the authorities, yeah. not to me. So what's your take on that, sir? Nothing exactly what you say. <laughs> this amazing thing about filmmaking is, it's like the editing process, where we very, actually it's very intuitive. A film always emerges, you know, it's not, it's not, you're not really looking for something. You're watching everything and suddenly one day something emerges out of it. And that's the most beautiful part of filmmaking. It's like when we put together a film, it literally is like a eureka moment. You go out and say, I found my film. It's not that I've. It's, and so that, that is the beauty of it. And for that, you have to really just look at it without any kind of a precondition. And if you're not really looking for it, if you're really looking for something that you know what you want, then it's not going to grow. It's not going to be an experience that it eventually became. Then, then you're just looking for exactly the things that you want and you're going to play favorites and it's not going to become that film that it became. 
and that, that's the most beautiful part of filmmaking. That's how that's how life is. Right? That so many. I'm a man, and there's so many million women around the world. We finally we, we settle for one. When we settle for one, how do you choose that? It's intuition in that moment. <laughs> See, how do you think life is like that? It's not really looking for something. It's, it's intuition. It's intuitive. It's organic. It happens, and you have to allow it to happen. Many of filmmakers don't allow things to happen to their film. 